three things to consider when using a Greenland paddle. Brandy wrote a great question. They mentioned that uh, one thing they'd like to see is some tips on how to make the best use of a Greenland paddle. That's uh, their preferred paddle. Uh, there's no short of videos on how to do a forward stroke. Uh, a lot of stuff with competition roles and things like that, but that's not the type of thing that they do. So some tips on using a uh, Greenland paddle more effectively uh, versus the use of the Euro paddle. So that's a great question. And I thought I'd do three things to maybe think about, especially for paddlers. Brandy, it sounds like you're not just getting started with the Greenland paddle. You know your way around it, but maybe these things um, can also help newer paddlers that are getting into using a Greenland paddle. And it might help others that have been using a Greenland paddle for a while, but maybe some of these things are not just incorporated into what they do every day. So the first one that I noticed that uh, a lot of times when paddlers get into using a Greenland paddle, or maybe they've been using it for a while, but not really effectively yet. One thing I noticed is they're not yet using the entire paddle. Uh, just not be afraid of throwing the paddle around. Uh, the, the, the Greenland paddle is made so that it fits comfortably in your hand. Uh, it's just the right size so that you can slide your hands back and forth across the entire paddle and then use it to your advantage. That's a really long lever that we're able to use in different situations. And if you need to make a big turn, if you need more support when sculling, if, uh, for example, uh, I use it all the times when I'm surfing, uh, because it allows me to very quickly turn. I extend the paddle quickly and I get more support so that I can turn around and then start sprinting as soon as I see a wave that I think I want to get on. Uh, and the same goes when I'm getting off a wave. Once I got off, if I want to turn quickly so that I could be pointing into the next wave, yes, I'll lose my momentum, but I might go for a low brace turn where I extend the paddle all the way out and then lean on it as far as I can, get the kayak around, and then start going back into the waves. But really that goes into any situation where you might want to use more of that paddle. Don't be afraid to use it, experiment with it. And you'll notice that eventually with that muscle memory, it'll kick in. Sometimes you just want that extra leverage. Sometimes you want that extra support. Your body automatically, your hands will extend the paddle and get that for you. Just another tool to put into your toolbox. The second one that I often see, to not be afraid of getting your hands wet. In the Greenland paddle, especially if you have shoulders, the blade, your, your, your hand essentially is on part of the blade. Just your pointer finger and your thumb really rest on the loom. And, and don't get me wrong, our hands are going to be moving the entire time. It's hand positioning is fluid. The part where your hand is sitting is also part of the blade. So if you're only dipping your tips, especially if you're in a slightly bigger kayak, don't be afraid of dropping your hand all the way to the water. Uh, as you go for the stroke because you'll be using essentially the entire blade. I think that comes from if you work on a forward stroke with a Euro blade for years, uh, you'll have your motion down and your hands don't really get into the water or, I mean, depending on what you're doing, but usually your hands and your paddler's box will be in a completely different place. You won't be dipping your hands into the water because the blade is at the end of the paddle and there's no reason for you to really go deep. Unless you're doing like a side slip or a sculling draw or something like that where you want that paddle completely vertical. So you will usually drop that hand into the water. But when you're just doing a forward stroke or something like that, a lot of times the hands stay up. And with a Greenland paddle, uh, my hands are just in the water all the time. And that that's something that sometimes I see paddlers that while their stroke is doing really well and they're moving efficiently through the water, they're not getting as much of the blade in there. Next time, see how much of the blade really you're putting in the water on every stroke. And the third thing to think about, um, and this one is a personal preference. This is my observation. And what I found is that with, with other paddles, Euroblades, um, wing paddles, they're designed to be really efficient, to work very well, to give you great leverage and lots of power. But I think it is designed in such a way so that that is given to you when you're able to mimic what realistically is a textbook forward stroke. 
uh, in order to get the most efficiency out of the paddle, you're going to want to move your body a certain way, your hands, your arms, rotation, all those things will come into play so that your body tries to use the paddle, the tool, the most efficient uh, possible motion of why it was designed to do that. And I, I might be wrong in this, but personally, I think the Greenland paddle is a little bit of a backwards take on that. And because because it was designed for each person and while sure the way it's carved and the way uh in the way it is held and how it goes through the water all those things will make it more efficient and the way you move your arms and your body and whatever will make your stroke more efficient what i've been finding as i speak to other paddlers especially those that have been uh, paddling a greenland paddle or just have been studying traditional uh, paddling for long traditional kayaking for a long time it seems to me that the paddle is made to fit the, the 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 body and the paddling style of each person therefore it's more about what does your body uh require to make the paddle most efficient a lot of times uh it seems to me that it just it just takes time on the water one of the things I really love doing is if anytime I'm at an event or I go on a trip or I, if there's a forward stroke class, I try to take that. If I'm on the water with paddlers that I've never uh, joined before, uh, it's always great to ask and find out uh, more about their forward stroke. Um, never feel that a forward stroke class is beneath you because you never know what a different instructor's take on the forward stroke will tell you. For example, I was at an event once and we had this amazing paddler from Greenland come to teach. And um, so there's a stroke that I had learned in a different class where with a Greenland paddle, the idea is if you think of it like a spear or like a very long lever and you essentially use gravity to help you. So think of it as you hold it up and then you're going to stab by your feet and then just use that incline as the blade right next to the kayak comes all the way down you're using that inclined plane as it comes down and you're stabbing each time instead of doing a stroke to the sides or or moving the paddle around it's just an absolute vertical stab bring in stab bring in on both sides and it seemed to me when I learned that one, it seemed it was more of um, of a sprinting kind of a stroke. And so we were at this event and this paddler from Greenland was showing us that she was doing her version of this stroke. It wasn't just for sprinting. She could take off and it was all in the core. She was using her abs to see her approach to this stroke was amazing and she was just leaving people in the dust just and keeping it up and don't get me wrong she was also very fit but her stroke was so efficient and uh so well refined to her body and her style that she was able to maintain it and it wasn't just sprinting it was just a very strong stroke for her I wanted to mention that I had seen this stroke before with the Euroblade. Uh, I was taking a class once and an instructor was telling me that it was very useful for sprinters or for racers to accelerate with it. But it's definitely different in that it's more of a stab and then crunch pull, stab, crunch, pull. That way you're accelerating and then moving to a normal forward stroke. Where in the Greenland one, it's more of a sustainable thing, especially because of using that angled lever going into the water for a long period of time uh, through the stroke so and also using gravity as it goes into the water it's not just you doing all of the motion it almost feels like gravity is doing a lot of the stroke for you so i definitely use the stab pull with a euro blade uh, and i've seen friends do it as well let's say when we're surfing and we want to and we want to accelerate to catch the wave or we want to get in or out of trouble and the reason I bring that up is when I did a, the trip to Norway where we circumnavigated the, uh, the island, leading up to the trip, I had a lot of late nights at work. So I couldn't really 
get out on the water and prep physically anywhere as much as I wanted to before the trip. And then the first and second day were rough for me. Uh, everyone else on the trip was physically way more fit. Uh, they had been paddling on a regular basis and I hadn't. And so I was keeping up with the group the entire time. By the third day, I my body had woken up and I was good to go and everything else was fine. But but I had two paddles. I had a Euroblade and then I also had a Greenland paddle. And at first I started with a Euroblade and, and overall... I was having a hard time keeping up with the group. And so then at one point, I just switched over on the very first day, switched over to the Greenland paddle. And I realized that what was helping me was I had more uh, versatility in terms of like I had more strokes to pull from. So even though I was making less power per stroke as the rest of the group, I would do a normal stroke. I would do a vertical stroke. I did some of the stabbing stroke. And every time I was using slightly different muscle groups and it allowed me over the course of the day to keep up the same speed as the rest of the group where, where if I had used the Euroblade, uh, I would have had less options in, in, the, in my style of paddling. I'm not blaming the paddle at all, please. Uh, it was my physical ability. I was not ready to be at that level of paddling for that many hours uh, in covering miles. And, and we didn't even cover that much. But just because I hadn't trained for it for the trip, I just my body wasn't ready. Also, don't get me wrong. And I don't claim to have the best Euroblade technique there is. I think if I had been more efficient in my Euroblade technique and I had practiced more, I it would have been a lot easier to keep up with the group. Just the anecdote that when I switched over to the Greenland paddle, I felt more comfortable uh, in keeping up with a fast group. And I felt like I had more opportunity to use different muscle groups and lots of different strokes uh, that were available to me. And so that worked for me. Every, I, I think I was the only person in the entire group that had a Greenland paddle. But, you know, to each their own, it worked for me. Something that I think maybe might be helpful. But to wrap up that story, I wanted to share it because I find sometimes that I'm developing efficiencies in my stroke if I'm out paddling for three days straight and many hours each day. Paddle for three days in a row, paddle for five days in a row, whatever you might be able to do, and do it with a paddle that you're looking to get more uh, comfortable with, you'd be surprised at the end of the trip, your body is going to know how to use that paddle inside out. And, and while you should try to learn the forward stroke from as many coaches as you can so that you can do it efficiently and safely and you're not and you're not putting pressure in places that you shouldn't be, I have found that your body will, after hours and hours and hours of repetition, your body will definitely streamline that process. So if there's anything you'd like to add, any anecdotes you might have, uh, if you disagree completely with what I had to share, completely fine. Please do share that below. I hope this was helpful. Subscribe if you'd like. And we're trying to put these videos out. And as always, this is Dorian Katzer. Thank you for watching. See you next time.